Everybody ready? You do better than I do. Good morning. Thank you all for attending. Before we get started, I would just like to recognize everyone who we have with us today. I'd like to begin with Mayor Deloach, who is here, also members of council. Thank you for being here. We also have with us District Attorney Meg Heap from Chatham County, U.S. Attorney Ed Tarver, U.S. Marshal Steve Smith. You will also hear from SCMPD Chief Lumpkin. Our local, state, and federal partners, we are pleased to have them here with us today. Members of the SCMPD command staff, and also in the back row, you have our violent crimes detectives. We are going to begin with Mayor Deloach, followed by a statement from Chief Lumpkin, Major Richard Zapel from our Criminal Investigations Bureau, and Mr. Ed Tarver from the U.S. Attorney's Office. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I got a statement I want to read. Uh, so that I don't miss anything. I think it's important to make sure we get all the details that we've got about this and move forward with it. But I wanted each one of you to, I first want to thank all the men and women that are behind me. Uh, this, is a, uh, this is a group effort that uh, is second to none as far as I'm concerned in our community and the effort to fight violent crime. And I want to thank each one of them that are here along with the council uh, appreciate the efforts we put into it, and, and the most important people we can uh, identify today. We need to identify our citizens uh, because none of this will happen and none of these things will take place unless we have the help of the citizens. And this is the reason we're here today, one of the reasons. So let me go ahead and read this so that you understand where we're coming from, okay? This week, officers of the Savannah, Chatham, Metropolitan Police Department and our state and local partners, including agents from the U.S. Marshal Southeast Regional Fugitive Task Force, arrested three male gang members and issued warrants against another for the September 12th murder of Dominic Powell. This is a particularly heinous crime for the four suspects, all members of the blood gang in Savannah, are charged with targeting Mr. Powell in retaliation after Mr. Powell had shot and killed a gang member who was attempting to rob him. The investigation revealed that one of the suspects also had ordered his own sister killed because he suspected she would testify against him in other crimes. Chief Lumpkin and his officers will provide the details of these crimes, but it's important for our community to understand that the criminal, these criminal activities such as this have been terrorizing some of our neighborhoods and isn't in innocent residents there for decades. And I'm telling you, it will, we will not tolerate it and it needs to end and will end now. These arrests the police will brief you on were achieved through the efforts of building capacity in our police department, including an emphasis on intelligence-led policing with, within the in-gun violence program. This model brings together collaboration between the Metro, the District Attorney, the U.S. Attorney, and the Mayor's Office. It includes law enforcement agencies, such as the U.S. Marshals, Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, FBI, Secret Service, Homeland Security, Georgia State Patrol, GBI, CNT, and Chatham County Sheriff's Office. I'd like to personally thank the U.S. Attorney Edward Tarver for his forthright leadership in bringing the capacity of the federal government to our fight against these violent crimes. This is what the end gun violence program is about. It's how we're going to end the reign of terror that has gripped our city and our community for far too long. We're going to continue to build this capacity and collaboration. We're going to continue to gain ground identifying villains, and remove criminals from our city one way or another. This is an important point I'm fixing to make. We've offered help to those that want to change their lives and become contributing members of our community. And this is important. 25% of those that we have approached have accepted our help. But let me make it clear, for those who don't, and won't, don't want our help and continue their destructive ways, the full force of the End Gun Violence Coalition will come after them. And all their associates, 
and every criminal, civil, and administrative means at our disposal, we will use. We will make sure the shooters, their associates, and anyone connected with the crimes are brought to justice. And our district attorney will seek the most severe penalty available under the laws of Georgia. The end gun violence program is working. It took some time to get root, build capacity, but it's now gaining tremendous steam. City residents have had enough. More and more of them are coming forward to help authorities solve crimes. Because of that, our police department has a homicide clearance rate at least 10% better than the national average. Make no mistake, this is my program. This is the mayor's program. This is the city of Savannah's program. This is the council's program. It needs to be the city, it needs to be the citizens program. This is, it was suggested by the Downtown Business Association that supports it, along with the Tourism Leadership Council and the Downtown Neighborhood Association. We need even wider support, and we need greater law enforcement capacity. We're gaining the law enforcement capacity and the citizenry support, and it's evident in our higher uh, clearance rate. As your mayor, I will be approaching organizations throughout the community for their active support in taking back our streets. It does not matter if the acts are committed by adults or by juveniles. This weak arrest proves that we're on the right track and our efforts are working. Now I'm going to turn it over to Chief Lumpkin to provide the details of these arrests. Thank you all very much. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Today, we are proud to stand here with our lo local, state, and federal partners uh, to inform you that our streets are a little safer today with these three gang members under arrest and that the media is actively helping us seat that fourth member. This, as the mayor said, is particularly heinous crime in that on September the 7th, Mr. Powell, Dominique Powell, was the victim of an armed robbery by gang members. He was able to defend himself. One of the individuals who were trying to rob him uh, was downed at that point. Another was arrested. That individual, in our opinion, then ordered the death of Mr. Powell. As the mayor said, we are not going to tolerate we will not, uh, gangs and groups in our community violating citizens' rights and harming citizens. Through an extensive investigation by our homicide investigators and uh, our violent crime investigation, they were able to connect the dots on this particular crime and other crimes as the homicide clearance rate shows. A plan was executed to, to take these individuals into custody with our local and state partners, particularly the Southeast Regional Fugitive Task Force. We were able to arrest the individuals using our SWAT team and the task force. The warrants have been served. The fourth suspect, a Mr. Walker, remains at large. I think you all are carrying his picture today in the media. We want him. We want him to turn himself in. Whether he turns himself in or not, we're coming for him. As the mayor said, the message is whether you're an adult or you're a juvenile, we're going to come for you if the you continue to violate the laws of the state of Georgia and our federal laws. Again, if we can move cases to the federal uh, courts for gun cases, we're going to move it. We implore parents, influencers to influence their juveniles, stop the juveniles involvement in crimes, we arrested the juveniles uh, that we can't speak to today regarding issues and challenges that we expected to blow up 
We arrested a juvenile yesterday on those kind of matters. We are arresting people every day with the intelligence that are being developed by the police department, its violent crimes group, its in gun violence group, and the intelligence led policing. To get into the specifics of it, uh, I'm going to ask Major Zapel to come up and talk to the two or three homicide clearances that he's made, uh, the people have made. Before he comes, I want to reiterate the work ethic, the that all of these people behind me have demonstrated the cooperation, uh, I think has been unprecedented probably in this community. Uh, the U.S. Attorney's support in terms of getting the federal agencies uh, to help us, which they were doing, but his office uh, full support of our efforts, and our district attorney. Uh, who cannot speak to these cases per se, for they are within her jurisdictions at this point to prosecute. The, we appreciate our citizenry as they step forward to provide more information. Every neighborhood has to step forward in order for we to make each neighborhood safer. We can make your neighborhood, no matter where you live, safer if we have a partnership with the residents in that neighborhood. Major Zegel. Good morning. Good morning. We're here this morning to cover a man that was victimized twice in five days in the Tatumville community. First, a robbery or an armed robbery, and secondly, a brutal murder. <clears throat> On September 7th, Dominique Powell um, was involved in an armed robbery. He defended himself and actually shot two of his attackers. Um, five days later, as a result of this investigation, we've learned he was the victim of a murder at the hands of a group of members of a blood gang here in Savannah. Today we're here to announce, and with our local, state, and federal partners, <clears throat> that we have ended this little reign of terror in that area from these people. Um, and it's not going to plague our community in that area anymore either. Um, we are proud to announce our streets are a little bit safer. Um, three members of, of a prolific street gang, specifically the Bloods, are behind bars and charged with murder, the murder that claimed the life of Dominique Powell. On the day this happened, I was working as well as everybody up behind me was working, um, and I'd like to point out this case was assigned to Detective Corporal John Garcia. Um, at the time, I did not, uh, having a lot of experience in this matter, I did not foresee the conclusion we have today. I didn't think this one would be cleared at all. Um, Detective Garcia, with the backing of his entire unit, his supervisors, his managers, and all our federal, state, and local partners, um, specifically the GBI, um, they did some fantastic work for us, cleared this case. Arthur Newton, a documented blood gang member, was arrested in connection to that incident and sent to the Chatham County Detention Center on armed robbery charges. This past Monday, members of the Southeast Regional Fugitive Task Force of the U.S. Marshals that has one of, a couple of our members embedded with them, um, and i specifically like to mention that, uh, Corporal Chase Cogswell, who's our person embedded with the Marshals, did a really good job in helping locate the individuals we were looking for in connection with this case once we obtained arm, or, uh, warrants for their arrest. On Monday, they located Timothy Coleman, serving them with murder warrants in, uh, on the south side of Savannah. On Tuesday, Arthur Newton had been at his CC or Chatham County Detention Center since the armed robbery was served his murder warrant, so he was already in jail. Yesterday, we served search warrants and arrest warrants on Artez Strain in the 5500 block of Skidaway Road. Um, he was put in jail from that. And now the fourth suspect, Tyreek Walker, which you all have pictures of already. He is the one we're looking for right now. We need to find him and get him off the street. He should be considered armed and dangerous, and we want him in our detention center. Throughout the entirety of this investigation, the SEMPD including, included the Chatham County District Attorney's Office, and now as these members await their fate behind bars, the DA's office is going to prosecute this case and as a gang incident and to seek the fullest extent of the law in pursuing justice for the victim and his family. 
This united front and collaboration from our local, state, and federal partners is an example of how we intend to use laser focus to continue to protect our community from the worst of the worst offenders, those people that we've identified as the worst of the worst offenders. The design of the End Gun Violence Step Forward Initiative is, is leading the way in that respect. Some of the gang members arrested were already on our radars. They were on our link charts um, with end gun violence. They had already been identified. And now we've got them behind, with the exception of one, behind bars. All in all, the collaboration of this um, was a fantastic teamwork by the entire team. We're going to continue to seek out violent offenders. And as I've always said, we're going to bring the fight to you. We're not waiting. We're taking the fight to you, as we always have. If you're using a gun and terrorizing people in this community, we're coming for you, and we're coming hard, and we're coming as fast as we possibly can. <clears throat> I want to um, reiterate what the chief and the mayor said about the work ethic of these folks behind me. Um, a few months back, or maybe several weeks back, we had a press conference where somebody wrote down the phrase I used, the thousand yard stare. They're tired. They're worn out. Um, we've got a little bit of break in the past six weeks, and maybe it's about a 750 yard stare right now. They're still very tired, but they're still doing a fantastic job. A 75% clearance rate in homicides, national average throughout my entire career, has been somewhere between 59 and 64%. But because you're dealing with small numbers, those percentages don't move much either way. And also a 10% above national average, and actually it's about 11 or 12% right now, is a very, very significant amount. Um, and that's when they're overworked, they're having a significant amount above the national average. Also, two other cases I'd like to mention. We had a homicide earlier this week. Um, we have warrants for him, uh, the suspect in that case. They've been put out. That's another case we've cleared amongst everything else and on top of all the work we did throughout the hurricane. And that's when all this stuff was happening. And also, we arrested a 12-year-old in the shooting death of a 6-year-old yesterday, yesterday afternoon. But I would just like to, if you can point, John, raise your hand. It's Detective John Garcia. He was the lead investigator in this case. Did a fantastic job with the support of everybody involved. And that's about the end of my statement. Do we have any questions? Can you talk about the background of the gang? Oh, I'm sorry. Does it have national <coughs> connections? They do have a national connection, yes, through Atlanta. And what kind of impact do these arrests have on the gang? We're still evaluating that at this point right now. But Mr. Tauber's going to take over right now. Thank you, Lieutenant Zabel. I'm just here to, to affirm the Department of Justice and the United States Attorney's Office's par partnership in this end gun violence initiative. Less than a year ago, it was less than a year ago that the United States Attorney General contacted me to uh, let me know that Savannah was on a list of six communities nationwide that, that had seen a significant spike in violent gun crime across the country. Uh, since that time, we have uh, redoubled our efforts to work with the SEMP and our other uh, late state and local and federal partners to make sure that we can identify, uh, indict, and prosecute those who are responsible. We will continue to aggressively uh, pursue, prosecute, and incarcerate those who are responsible for violent gun crime in this community. Uh, I think that we're at a point where we're seeing some uh, the fruits of our, our, our efforts and we look forward to continuing to, to target those who are responsible for terrorizing this community. Uh, we want the citizens of Savannah to know that the number one priority of the Department of Justice is the protection of the people in Savannah, and so we will use all of our resources and uh, to the extent possible to identify those responsible for this crime, uh, to, to pursue and prosecute them, and to make sure that uh, uh, this type of behavior is not tolerated in the community. Thank you. What type of impact will, uh, your question was what type of impact with this arrest? We know these three will, in my opinion, uh, with the prosecution of the uh, DA's office, these three will never harm anyone else. These arrests also should serve uh, as a disincentive for others to join those groups. These, these arrests, and as I spoke to earlier, uh, we're asking influencers mothers, fathers, uncles, aunts, to pull kids back from gang and group activity. We are arresting them. She is convicting them. Uh, if you want to spend the rest of your life in state prison or feral, go down the group gang uh, road. 
and we will certainly arrest you with the evidence to actually convict you. You're not going to stand on your head and do this type of time. Well, that's a wrap. Anybody got any questions? As, as uh, be specific, because I don't know anything other than these great people behind me. Why did you target this particular? What was the question? Why did you decide to highlight this particular? I assume you gang related. This is serious gang related. It was a serious gang related incident with national affiliation. Most of our gangs are hybrid gangs and they don't have national affiliation. And this was one specifically ended in a murder. It started as something else and it ended in a murder. So that's why we're highlighting this one. And it was fantastic work by everybody involved. As, as the major said earlier, the fantastic work by the uh, violent crimes group led, uh, in this instance, uh, by uh, Cor Detective Corporal Garcia. I think the evidence will show at the end of the day that we can prove this was an order hit uh, by a national gang uh, member. And that is not the norm in this community, even with the violence that we have had, that we can show Clearly, I believe the evidence will, and that's one reason that we have highlighted it. And it actually involved not just Savannah Chatham, but the actual arrest of these individuals, and uh, it involved this entire group of uh, agencies that you see standing behind us. There are some other folks involved in some of the other arrests. We're not going to highlight what each element does, for we are not telling the uh, criminals how to commit their crimes and we can't come get to them. But with these people behind us, the capacity of the Savannah Chatham Metro Police Department is significantly improved and this is local, state, and feral. You can see the, uh, those uniforms back there. All of them don't have the uniforms on, but mo that multiplies our capacity. Thank you. It's obviously a good arrest, but how many of the crimes that we're dealing with right now are gang-related? How many murders are we talking about that are gang-related, whether it's local or national? We continue to get to that question. We are building our intelligence capacity. I don't think Savannah is any different than the rest of the nation. And in the rest of the nation, it's probably 45 to 70 percent. We don't show it that's what we keep telling you, that we have to build an intelligence capacity. We have not had that capacity in this community. Why would the, uh, America be experiencing 50% gang-related murders and Savannah only 10%? That doesn't make sense. So if it's 45 to 70, where do you think Savannah fits in that range? I'll have to get uh, that. I'll answer it when I get to the figures. I don't want to give you a bad number. It's low compared to the national. But we're getting there. So then if it's low compared to the national, where are the other crimes coming from? It seems we still have that problem. I don't believe that's the reality. The, uh, the, I believe the reality, we are just uh, like the rest of America. I believe there are hybrid gangs, national gangs, and I think if we, when we, Last year this time, we would, uh, if we would use our pure figures, we would be around 10%. And we know that's not true. Uh, the, I'll get, give you the figure. I believe that we are up around 50%. But that's my intuitive feel, having policed in other communities and having watched this issue uh, nationally for, I've been a chief for 20 odd years. It does not change just because we're in Savannah Chapel. If we did, we would not tell you. <laughs> I can't. I, certain things we cannot tell you. If those numbers have changed so significantly, Chief, is that just a, a lack of record keeping in this case, or has there been a change? In no, well, we, we tell you an intelligence capacity to build intelligence. That's a, one of the things is 
communication between citizens and police. The mayor spoke to it that we have to have communication. I spoke to it that we have to have trust and communications in every neighborhood to determine that, uh, what's actually occurring. People don't commit crimes in front of police uniforms or people they know are police officers. We have to have citizenry input or into our intelligence functions, and then we have to connect the dots. We are building that capacity. We are much better today than we were six months ago, or and certainly 12 months ago. Thank you, everyone. But it's not a turnkey to build an intelligence uh, system.